<laughs> there we go. So example three, find the domain. Last night's video notes, you guys had all of those properties for log functions. Do you guys remember what the domain, what, it, what did it say for the domain of log? Yes, Carson. It's the range of an exponential function. It is. It's the range of an exponential function because those, two fu those are the inverse functions. Would you agree? What is the range of an expo? All the The range. The range is y is greater than 0. So the, the domain of all log functions, can it be 0? No. Can it be negative? No. So the domain of all log functions must always be greater than 0. Greater than zero. So we're going to start with this. So what we're going to do first is, if you see this right here, that tells you it's changing the x, which is the, the domain. We're going to take it. And we're going to set equal to 0. We will solve for x. So if you solve for x, Marco, what do you think you'll get? 2. Two. Perfect. OK. So right now, is the domain all of our numbers excluding 2? No, because you cannot have negative numbers. So I highly recommend you, you make a number line. Put 2 on the number line and test it. Okay. Can I have 2? No, because no, that will give me 0. Can I have 0 in my domain of all or any log functions? No, so it's a whole. I'm going to pick some really small numbers, like negative 100. When you plug in negative 100, minus 2, positive or negative? Negative. negative. Can that be in my domain? I'm going to plug in positive 100, positive or negative? Can that be in my domain? Yes. So I'm going to be shading this side. So how would you write your domain? Right, x is greater than 2. A nice cell phone. Can we shut that down? OK. All right, so I'm also going to write it as an interval notation as well. Okay. So you can write it as x is greater than 2 or from 2 to infinity. All right, with that, let's move on to b. Similarly, what should we do to find the domain of any log function? You take this and you do what? Set it because of zero. It's a fraction. Don't be scared of fraction, okay? First off, we have to state what x cannot be. What is it x can't be ever? One. x can never be 1. Why is that, by the way? Because it makes your denominator zero. Okay. So now I have to solve for x. How do you solve for x from here? Huh? Yeah, let's cross multiply. Sounds good. What happened when I multiply that to zero? It canceled. I have zero. Yes or no? Good. And then I'm going to multiply that cross multiply there. So zero equals what? Zero equals x plus three. Okay. Solve for x. What do you think you get? X equals to negative 3. Gosh. Is the domain right now, X can never ever be 1, and X can never ever be negative 3. Woo! Sideways. Oh, okay. Sorry. There you go. So, so is the domain right now, X can't be negative 3, and X can't be 1? No. Can, again, can log be negative ever? No. So you might want to make a what? A number line and put those two values on it, okay? We're going to put negative 3 and 1 on the number line. Put those two the... Okay. Can I have negative 3 in this function of log? No, because it makes a 0. Would you agree? And I can't have 0 in it. Can I have 1 in this function of log? No. It makes the whole thing does not exist. I'm going to plug in like negative 100. So when I put in negative 100 plus 3 for the numerator, positive or negative? Divided by negative minus 1. Negative 100 minus 1, positive or negative? So a negative divided by negative is now a positive. So it's positive over here. Okay, I'm going to be shading that in. How about when I pick a value right in the middle? 
what value should we choose? Zero. Plug zero in. Tell me positive or negative. Negative. Should I be shading that in? How about when I pick positive 100? It's positive. Perfect. Okay. Let's state our domain in interval notation. Because What's the domain in our interval notation? Mm-hmm. Okay. So non inclusive on both. Okay. It's all right. Why don't you guys try C on your own? Work out C, please. So give it a shot. Try C. What do you think C is going to be? Right or wrong, it's not important. I just want you to try. How would that make, so say you have like negative 4 and then 2, which is in the thing. Wouldn't that give you a negative? Right, but look, when I plug in negative 4, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Would you agree? Yeah. On the bottom, negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Negative uh, divided by negative is now a, a positive. Mm -hmm. Once you have an answer, can you please compare it to your teammates? Talk it out. So do me a favor and talk it out, please. Why minus one? Yeah, but what if you plug in minus one into the equation? You get a minus one minus one. Nathan? Oh, yeah. Zero minus one. And like, uh, and then we're trying to figure out the domain. Good. Did you talk to your team yet? <laughs> what have, the, have What have you guys decided? Well, okay. Why not? How come I can't? Right. And then absolute value makes it what? It's positive. Except what value makes it zero? Uh, one. one. <laughs> okay. So is the domain for C all real numbers? Is it only from one to infinity? No. Why not? <laughs> yeah, you have an absolute value, right? That means whatever negative numbers um, you choose, it's going to make it positive, except one thing that's going to make it zero, which is one. So you're right. It's going to be all real numbers, not including one. You can write it that way, or you can write interval. Someone tell me how to write it as an interval. Or what? Uh huh. Negative infinity to 1 to 1 to Perfect. Okay. So either way, we're good. All right. Let's move on to example 4. Um, gosh. I need to show, like, all four grids. Let's see how this is going to go. Can you see that, by the way? Okay. Example 4. Find the domain. That's letter A. Letter B, you're going to have to graph it all out. Letter C, from the graph, you need to determine the range and if you have any asymptotes at all. Letter D, find the inverse. Letter, I'm sorry, letter D, find the inverse. Letter E, find the domain and range of your inverse. Letter F, graph the... That's a lot, right? Okay, let's start with A then. Do we know how to find the domain of f of x equals negative ln of x minus 2. What do we do? We just did a bunch of domains, right? What do we do here? Set it equal to 0. What do you mean, Bishop? Perfect. Solve for it, Bishop. What do you end up with? Good. What do you guys do with that number? 
Is the domain right now all reals, not equals to two? No. Marco, we, what do you want to do with x equals to two? Number line. Perfect. Number line. Can I include two in my domain? No. So closed circle at two or open circle? Open. What happened when I plug in negative 100? It's negative. Can I have it? No. How about when I plug in positive 100? It's positive. All right, y'all. What's your domain? In interval notation, please. Negative, I'm sorry, positive 2 to infinity. Or you can write x is greater than, than 2. Part B says you need to do what? Graph it. So let's start with the parent. What's the parent function here? Parent function. Uh-huh. I hope you said y equals, right? <laughs> yes, natural y equals natural log of x. You are correct. Okay, three points. Can you look back at your properties and tell me the generic three points? Uh, one, zero, and eight, one, and one over eight, comma, eight, one. Okay, one, comma, zero, okay, a, comma, one, and one over a, comma, negative one. Where did these three points come from? Yeah, the exponential, we switch the x and y. Because we have natural log here in our function, what's our base? E. Okay, your base is E. I'm going to spell that out. Base is E. All right, so let's, three points. Our real three points for the parents are, first point is still one comma, zero. Second point, Sophia, what do you think it is? I'm going to keep it as what, guys? E. You're right. That's the approximation for E. Okay. And this is 1 over E comma negative 1. Do we have an asymptote? Do we have an asymptote? Did we have an asymptote in exponential? What was it before? Y equals. So what do you think it is now in log? X equals. So I'm going to go down. Make this really fat so we can see this asymptote. Okay. Okay. And then just plot your dots. Okay. So first it says one comma zero. Then e e is a value about what can e about approximate. A value for E for me? 2.71. Perfect. 2.71, 2.718, 2 2.7. I'll take any one of those. I'm going to go in between 2 and 3, and then I'm going to go up 1. And then 1 over E, think of that as about a third of its distance. Okay. And then go down to negative 1. All right. Here is. Try not to touch your asymptote. Make your dots bigger if you don't think I can see them. Okay, equation number two, we are going to do y equals negative natural log of x. State the transformation for me, Elijah. No, that's the equation. You're right. But what kind of transformation when the negative is multiplied to ln of x? You're close. Perfect. Reflect about the over the x-axis. Okay, So three points. Nathan, can you give me one point, please? Reflect over the x-axis class. That means what will change? All the y values. So Nathan, point number one, what would you like me to write? Perfect. Okay. Point number two, Kelly, can you give me point number two? Perfect. Point number three, please, Victoria. One over e comma what? I'm sorry, one more time. It used to be negative one, Victoria. Okay. You reflected it over the x-axis. So whatever's on the top, it is now on the bottom. Whatever's on the bottom, it is now on the top. Perfect. 
Okay. Asymptote. Malia, should I move it or should I keep it? Remember, where was your asymptote before? No. Not at one, you mean at, oh, oh, yeah, zero. at zero. So should I move it or should I keep it in the same place? Keep it, perfect. All right, guys. Um, and uh, here we go. <coughs> Plot your dots. Here we go. One comma zero. 2.718-ish is now down here at negative one. And then one third ish, it's about positive one. So listen, if I can write and stand and stand and write. Okay, how does that look? I can't see my dots. I'm going to make it much bigger. Okay. Does it look like it reflected over the x axis? Okay, hopefully, because that's what we said. Last equation, y equals negative ln of x in quantity minus 2, okay? Um, so the transformation. John, what's, what do you think the transformation is for this? Close, not down 2. Right 2. Why is it right 2 and not down 2? Bishop? Inside the parentheses. Perfect, okay. Right 2. Okay, points, can you please give me one of the points, Tristan? Um, three, zero. Perfect, three, zero. I'm adding two to all values of what? X, good. For E though, I'm going to keep E class as E. So E plus two, keep it as is, okay? And then I'm going to do... What's 1 over e plus 2? Let's do it on the side here. 1 over e plus 2. Can I possibly simplify that? Yeah, that's like 2 and 1 over e. So I can simplify that a little bit, okay? So 2 and 1 over e, comma, it's a positive 1. Okay, so asymptote. Maddie, should I move it? Should I keep it in the same place? Yeah, so now it's going to be at x equals 2. So x equals 2. And then plot your dots, okay? Move it up a little bit. Make it bigger. There you go. So 3 comma 0. Yes? You're right, we did do that. We did 2 plus 1 over e, but you can simplify that. Okay, so 2 plus 1 over e is exactly the same as 2 and 1 over e. Okay, um, can someone tell me what two integers should we plot e plus 2? Between 4 and 5, very good. Okay, so in between 4 and 5, go down to negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then 2 and 1 over e is about 2 and a third of its distance. So go up to positive 1. Did the shape change? No, it shouldn't. Okay. All right. Are we done with the graphing of oh, f? Perfect. Now let's go back to this. So that was b. Let's do c. Sorry. c from the graph of F. Can you state the range? So this is letter C. What is the range class? It's all real numbers. Very good. Do we have any asymptote here? We do have a vertical. VA at where? X equals 2. Beautiful. Okay. Part D. Find the inverse function of F. What is the very first thing we do to find any, any inverse? Uh-huh. Perfect. So this is part D. We're going to write, instead of f of x, we are now writing what, x, y, what? Which one? It used to be y. F of x is the same as y, right? Don't we want to switch now? We want to write what? 
x equals. Would you agree? Negative ln. It's still negative ln. It used to be x minus 2. So now we would write y minus 2. Okay. Okay. Do we box that up? No. What do we do now? Yep. Get y by itself by doing what first? Not yet. I can't change to expo yet. Nope, I don't have a fraction, so I can't cross multiply. Yes, you have to isolate your natural log or log function class. So right now, there's a negative in the front, so divide both sides by? Negative 1. If I divide by negative 1, what do I now have? Negative x equal to natural log of y minus 2. Do I box that up? Nope. What do we do? How do I undo log function? What do you have to use? How do you undo log function? I want you to think for a second. What do you use to undo log? If that's really what we need to do here. Ethan? Yes, you need to use exponential. So guess what you need to do here? Rewrite this as? An exponential. Very good. So rewrite as an exponential function, right? How do I rewrite a log function as an exponential? Because that's what the video was last night. What base do we have here, class? Perfect. Okay. So now what? You know what base is. How do I rewrite as an expo? Yes. No, not e to the y. You're close. e to the, Maddie? e to the negative x equal to what? y minus 2. Perfect. Do we box this up? No. Nick, last step. Do what? Good. Add 2 to both sides. Guys, do I put this 2 with the exponent? Nope. So e to the negative x. Write 2. Line up with your base. This is your what? Inverse. Okay. All right. That was le what letter? E. What was letter D? That was D. What was E? Perfect. Domain and range of inverse. Do we need to do any work here? No. Okay. Domain. Like, what's the domain of the inverse? All real numbers. True or false? Perfect. Just look at the range of your regular. Range. Elijah, what's the range of our inverse? What do you need to look at? The domain of the regular. So Elijah, look at the domain of the regular and tell me what. Huh? X cannot equal to 2. Are you positive about that for the domain of the regular function? Good. Perfect. Then can you tell me what the range is for our inverse? Yes. Very good. Y greater than 2. Or can I write it as an interval? 2 to infinity? Perfect. Last thing of this. What are we doing? Graphing what? Inverse. Any work needed at all? No, I don't have to do any more work except writing down what I need to write down. First, I'm going to do, uh, that's E, so this is F. Do I already know the points? What are the points? Yeah, just the opposite. Switch your X and Y. If it used to be 3 comma 0, it is now 0, 3. And then negative 1 comma e plus 2, keep it as e plus 2. Since you can't simplify this, you can go 1 comma 2 and 1 over e. So those are the points of my inverse. How about the asymptote? Where should it be now for the inverse? Add 2 for x and, or for y? For y, okay. So... All right, plot your dots.
zero, three, <coughs> negative one. Again, earlier we talked about e plus two. What two integers should we plot that in between? What two integers? Four and five, perfect. Okay, so we're gonna go negative one in between four and five. One, two, three, four, four and five. Okay, and then one and about two and a third of its distance. Looks like I'm kind of making, covering my dots. I'll make that a little bit bigger. All right, we have everything we need for one eye. Any comments or questions on? Yes, Marco. Why is it three above the asymptote? Where? Where? I'm, oh, the asymptote? Yeah. Because the asymptote on the f function is x equals two, so its inverse has to get a y equals to to two. Anything else on our one eye? On uno. Con dos. If this is on the test, like today, can we handle it? No, not yet. Okay, you're right. You do need some practice. All right, let's go ahead and work this one out. Okay. Okay, so uh, the directions are now move away from me, so I'm going to ask you to uh, tell me what they are, okay? A, what was A? Domain. domain, okay. Domain, how do we find the domain class? X. Yeah, take the x minus one and we set it equal to? Zero, so x minus one equal to zero, that means x equal to one. Is the domain all row numbers, not including one? No, make your number line. By the way, is it mandatory? to make a number line. No, that's just for us. I'm a visual learner, so I make it so I know um, which way our domain is going. But if you see it right away, you don't have to make it. Okay, when I plug in negative 100, positive or negative? Negative. When I plug in positive 100, positive or negative? So your domain is on the right or on the left? On the right. So it's gonna be x is greater than one. Perfect. Let it be, I know that we're supposed to graph. Am I correct? Okay, so B. First equation, f of x equals log of x. Gosh, what base is this? How do you know? Why not base two? Why not base one? According to your video notes, if you don't see a base, is it base one? Whoa, my computer went to sleep. Haley, can you just hit a mouse or a keyboard over there? Okay, if you don't see a base, it's always base 10. Okay, so I'm gonna spell this out. This is always gonna be base 10. Okay. What base 10? Three points are. Can you give me three points, please? First point. One comma zero. Next point, ten comma. 1. Next point, 1 over 10, comma, negative 1. Asymptote at x equals 0. Okay. All right. Let's plot the dots. 1, comma, 0, 10. This is a grid by 10 by 10, so go all the way at the end. And then 1 tenth, negative 1. Here we go. Equation number two, we will have y equals three times log of x. Raise your hand and you can give me the transformation of this, please. Vertical stretch, factor of three. Vertical stretch, factor of three, true or false? Perfect. Vertical stretch, factor of three. So three points are, let's start with the first point. First point, please, Kaylee. Y, 
your close, if, remember, vertical stretch means you're multiplying the y value by 3, right, Kaylee? Yes. What's the y value for the first uh, one? It'll be 1, comma 0. Perfect. It's still 1, comma 0. Okay. Danny, second point, please. Um, 10, comma 3. Perfect. Shay, third point, please. Um, 1, 10, and then a negative Perfect. Okay. All right. Asymptote, same put, right? So x equals to zero. Plot the dots. One comma zero. Ten go up three now, okay? And then one ten go down to negative three. So if you can see the dots, the y values are definitely changing. Next equation, we will now put it all together. y equals 3 times log over x minus 1. State the transformation, please, Chris. Uh, right one. Perfect. Right 1. Bishop, where should we put the asymptote? I'm sorry, one more time? One. At 1. x or y equals, dear? Perfect. Nicely done. Okay, so x equals 1. Okay. Again, we only need three points. I'm going to move it up a little bit so we can see. Um, your three points should already be in your, your um, graph number two. I'm moving it up so you, won't, you can't see on mine, but hopefully you can see on yours. Okay, so first point. Ashlyn, what do you think the first point is? Um, is it 1, 1? Because I moved it up so I can't see mine. 1, 1? Yes, no, maybe? Remember, it used to be 1, comma, 2, 0. Very good. Okay. Next point, it used to be 10, comma, 3, so now it's what? 11, comma, 3. Okay. Next point, it used to be 1 tenth, comma, negative 3. So where would that be now? One and one tenth, very good. Comma negative three, beautiful. We already have your asymptote drawn out. We have the dots. Let's plot them. Move it up a little bit. So two comma zero goes here. Eleven comma three. It just one extra over. Just make an extra mark. So go up three, and then uh, one and one ten go down to negative three. Okay, graphing done. A and B, all done. C, what's C asking? Range and asymptote. So let's see if we have any. So C, what's the range class? All real numbers. Okay. Asymptote, Michael E, do we have any asymptote? Uh, yeah, that's what? Yeah, it's a VA at x equals to 1. Beautiful. So letter C is done. Letter D. Are we looking for the inverse and letter D? Thank you. All right, inverse. Here we go. The process of finding inverse, what do we always do initially? Yep, switch your x and y. So here we go. x equals 3 times log of what? y minus 1, right? <laughs> Okay, first step. Yes, you have to isolate your log function. So divide both sides by 3. Okay, so x divided by 3 equals log over y minus 1. Can I box that up? No. Nope. Do what now? Rewrite it in what form? Exponential. What base is this? 10. So can you raise your hand, please? Raise your hand. What do we start with? Yes, my dear. 10 raised to x over 3. Very good. So y minus 3. Very good. Okay. So 10 <laughs> raised to the power of x divided by 3 equal to y minus 1. We're almost done. Okay. What should we do last? Tegan, what should we do last? Um, add very good. 
Okay, so F inverse of X is class. By the way, can I write 10 to the 1 third X? Is that the same as 10 to the X divided by 3? Yep, okay. 10 to the 1 third of X. Where should I put the positive 1? With the exponents or the same line as your base? Same line as your base. So please write this very cautiously. Okay. All right, A, B, C, D, all done. E, what's E? Find the domain of range of uh, the, the inverse, or no, or regular. Inverse, okay. So E, domain of the inverse is, Malia, what's the domain of an inverse? Um, the domain of the inverse is average. Very good. The range of the inverse, what do you think? Okay, Taylor, what do you think? The range of the inverse. Y is greater than zero. Is that true? What was the domain of the regular before class? X was greater than one. So the range of the inverse should be? Y should bless you greater than one. Okay, perfect. All right, let's do F. It's graphing the inverse. Three points are, what are those three points, Connor? Zero two. zero two, beautiful. Next one, dear. Um, uh, three eleven. Perfect. Three eleven. And negative three and one over and one and one over two. Beautiful. Nicely done. Gabrielle, can you tell me where should we be um, graphing our asymptote? Perfect. Y equals one. Okay, so zero up to three, we're gonna go all the way past 11. So just make an extra dot up there, okay? And negative three, one and one ten. Okay, how does that look? So let's recap this. What's your base if you don't see any base in any log, any of your log function? 10. Okay, so make sure we understand that. All right, next one. That's two eyes, right? Three eyes. Have you done this before? Yeah, so this is a review because we're putting it all together. First, domain. So that's what letter A1 is to answer. What function is this? Exponential. So domain of Becca of any exponential is all reals. Beautiful. Okay. B is gonna want us to graph, so let's start with the parent. Oh, not yet. We are just looking for the letters, right? So domain is gonna be all reals. Okay. So parent, this is your exponential. So y equals e to the x. Say, what do you think the three points are? Um, zero, one. zero, one, good. One, Perfect. One, um, Nicely done. Asymptote, vertically or horizontally? Good. So asymptote at y equals to zero. So here we go, zero, one. 1 and about 2.718, negative 1 and about a third of its distance. Okay. Equation number 2, y equals e to the power of x minus 2. Let's give it a shot. What kind of transformation is this? Very good. Right two, beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna go right two. So first point, Nathan, what's your first point here, dear? If we're going right two. Perfect, okay. Next point, please, Ethan. Um, 
Perfect. Okay. Michael A, last point, please. Perfect. Asymptote, we're going to stay in the same spot. All right, two, go up one. Three, go up about 2.718. I think this is negative. Am I right? Negative one. Con oh, we move right. I lied. Sorry, just one. Um, so positive one, one and one. Third ish. Last one, here we go. Y equals, we have e to the power of x minus two, and then we're adding three. Transformation. Okay. Uh, up, three. up three, true or false? True. Okay, so the three points are, the first one is gonna be two comma, two comma four, okay, good. The next one is going to, I'm going to keep E as E. Would that be okay? E plus what? E plus 3. And the next one, I'm going to write 1 comma. I can simplify this, by the way. 1 over E plus 3, it's what? 3 and 1 over E. So that's 3 and a third-ish, okay, since we don't have a calculator. But labeling, we're going to keep it as its exact value. All right. Asymptote, are we keeping or moving? Moving up, so moving on up, y'all. So y equals to 3. 2, go up 4. 3, gosh. Marco, where do you think we should plot 3, comma, e plus 3? Okay. So in between what two integers is that, Marco? Between five and six. You guys agree with Marco? Yep, so here we go. Uh, three, comma, go in between five and six, or so five point five ish, if you want to think of it that way. Okay, so three, four, five, right there. And positive one, three and a third. Okay, so those are your dots. Okay, all done with graphing. So A and B are done. C, what was C again? What did it want us to do? <coughs> Range. Okay, good. Range for this is Y is greater than 3. Asymptote, HA or VA? HA at Y equals 3. Beautiful. D is looking for its inverse. Am I correct? All right. So to look for the inverse, we would do what? Flip your, switch your X and Y. So here's D. So I'm going to write x equals e to the x minus 2 plus 3. And there are multiple ways, okay? I'm sorry, I should have a y on there. There are multiple ways of solving for y. You don't have to do it my way if you already know how to do it your own way. Okay, let's solve for y. What do you want to do? Subtract 3. You always have to isolate your base before you rearrange it or rewrite that in log. So now it's x minus 3 equals e to the power of y minus 2. What base is this? E. So you're going to use what? to? What's the inverse of E? Base E. Natural log. So guess what we're going to do to both sides? Guess what we're going to do to both sides? Take the, go in and Compose the, the what? Natural log, okay? And this is one way. It doesn't have to be this way. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and what I whatever I do to the left, I'm gonna do to the right. So ln of e to the power of y minus two. In the video notes, what's ln of e? One. One, you are number ln e. Okay, so can I drop it? Drop it, okay, so if I drop it, ln of x minus 3 equals to, I'm running out of space, y minus 
two. We are almost done. What should we do from here to isolate your Y? Add two to both sides. Okay, so I'm going to add two to both sides. So if I add two to both sides, Y equals what? If I add 2 to both sides, what is it going to equal to? Natural log of x minus 3 in quantity plus 2. Can I combine the negative 3 and the 2? No, okay, because one's a horizontal translation and one's a vertical translation. Mm -hmm. You can, that is another way. You can totally rewrite that as a log function, and they're both are going to be just right. Okay, last piece before we call it a day. That was what letter? D. What was E? Okay, domain of the inverse, quickly. Domain of x is greater than 3. Range of the inverse, please. All real numbers. And then f, which is graphing its inverse. Am I correct? Do we really have everything we need? Yep. Asymptote is not y, but it will be at x. Okay. All the points are already here, so it will be 4, comma, 2. E plus 3, comma, 3. 3 and 1 over e plus, I mean, comma, 1. So 4, 2, plot your dots, guys. e plus 3 is going to be about 5.7. Go up 3. And then 3 and a third-ish, go up to 1. Which way should I be curving this? Opening upwards or downwards? Does it go like this? Yes. Okay. The curvature of this is important, so make sure you guys curve it the correct way. Oh, hey, that is an egg roll.